It will celebrate 2020 being an absolute cockhole of a year. Hang on. Celebrate. No, probably commiserate, mourn. Today we are going to paint actual fucking garbage. Hello. That's right, beautiful, sweet, kind denizens of YouTube. It's been a year. It's been a year. And uh, I wanted to do something that, you know, was a little bit funny and silly. and But also, would you know, would show you like a bunch of useful techniques that you'd get a bit of a kick out of. And, and so with that in mind, I decided to paint actual fucking trash. Um, now this is actually this is actually a very sensible thing to, to choose to paint for a tutorial video and I'll tell you why I'll tell you why because something like a garbage dumpster you have to go through a fucking shitload of weathering techniques and people are always asking how to do weathering techniques it's one of the most requested things literally from my first miniature YouTube video which actually is not that long ago I'm making myself sound way longer in the tooth than I am there but whatever I digress People have been requesting stuff to do with weathering, uh, chipping, dust, dirt, grime. I'm even going to show you a way to paint bird shit today. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a good time. So let's scoot to down cam. Let's look at every single weathering technique I know all applied to the same miniature. It's going to be fun. Right then, for starters, we have sprayed an entire bin in silver. We've assembled it and we sprayed it inside and out with silver. I trust you to do this yourself. Uh, now we're going to go into some chipping medium. This is Vallejo chipping medium. If you don't own this, you can decant some hairspray into a container and you can use hairspray instead. But we're just going to paint it on all the areas where we would expect chips to happen. So areas that are going to rub a lot, areas that are going to get corroded a lot by you know rust and that kind of crap. Uh, anywhere where you think that there would be a lot of chipping, put some chipping medium or some hairspray. Dab it all around, get it everywhere that you want it. And then go into whatever color you want the thing to be over the metal. So in this case, I chose Naga Green because it looks like a very sort of municipal color. Uh, and I just spray a bunch of coats over. Uh, I actually sprayed a couple more off camera as well after this, just to get a really nice, solid, rich, flat coat of green. Um, you know, you can use your own judgment for how far you go with that, but once it's fully covered in green, and it's got chipping medium under that green, and it's got metal paint under that, you're then gonna want a stiff as fuck brush, and you're gonna want my hand in the way so you can't see what I'm doing. Don't worry, I'll fix that in a minute. There you go, you're starting to see it now. With an extremely stiff brush, you're just gonna aggressively rub away at that paint, and the chipping medium will stop it adhering, so it'll create chips, as the name implies. That's why it's called chipping medium. Um, I also, you'll notice, didn't paint behind the sliding doors there because I figured that's the kind of cheap ass thing that you know local councils or municipal companies might do. Save money on paint by not painting the areas that aren't seen when it's closed. I thought it looked cool, so just going around and chipping the shit out of this now. And you can see it exposes really nice, bright, shiny metallic paint underneath. The paint looks completely untouched underneath, which is wicked because that's what gives you a nice convincing chip effect. From there now, I want to start graffitiing this up. So I chose to do all my graffiti in black and white, just because obviously they're very neutral. They're not going to interfere with any of the other colors that I put on this. They're not going to, you know, cause any weird interactions. You don't have to go with black and white. Graffiti is basically just fucking freehand. Um, however good or bad you are, it doesn't really matter because there is good graffiti and there is shit graffiti. And, and, and all sorts of ranges in between. It doesn't really matter. Um, I like to simulate drips. I also did the uh, the textbook S. If you are British and have ever attended school, you have drawn this S at some point. Uh, did a quick sort of signature there. A little ban the bombs symbol. Is that the right way up for ban the bombs? Or is that a Mercedes logo? A flaming skull. Again, drips. Paint those drips. Bit of daka daka. Why not? So I could like fit one last one in, so a quick flaming heart as well. There we go. That's some graffiti. And I just took this time to uh, paint the lid in black as well, because I had black paint at hand. Again, use whatever black paint you like. It's usually a sort of vulcanized hard rubber. Um, so it will be a kind of matte black, but if you don't have a matte black at hand, it's really not going to ruin the look of the piece. Paint with what you've got. 
Next up into some Vallejo Environment Rust Texture. Now again, if you have Typhus Corrosion from Games Workshop, use that. If you have a homemade rust texture, use that, whatever. This is just to do the darkest, dingiest, shittiest, rustiest parts. So the aim here really is to just cover as much area as I feel would collect a lot of water, uh, area that I feel would, you know, primarily have those sort of big drags of rust in it. Also, I apologise if you hear my doorbell there. I'm not going to be able to edit that out, I don't think. That'll be the, uh, the postman arriving. Always in the middle of voiceover, I tell you. Always in the middle of voiceover. Royal Mail, no. Anyway, yes, this is the important part. Look, look what I did there. Finger dragging. So the idea with this rust texture is uh, to do lots of finger dragging. The finger dragging sort of gives you that very smeared effect to it, uh, which kind of naturally produces that look of, you know, water running down a surface over time and producing those smears. So uh, so that's really the idea of this section is just to show you the finger dragging technique. You can mix it with some dotted and some painted stuff as well to give you different layers of depth. And that's really what this whole technical practice is about, is layering. You want to think about what lives on top of what. So, you know, the graffiti probably would have gone on as soon as the thing was fresh. And obviously the metal is what it's made of. The paint is on top of that, etc., etc. You're just thinking about building layers up, building layers up. And uh, once you've got this nice smeary rust, sort of nicely all over every surface, you're already looking pretty filthy at that stage. If, you know, if you wanted to put that on the table looking like that, no one would be mad at it. It's, it's fine at this stage, but obviously we're not going to be satisfied. So we're going to mix Avalon Sunset and Word Bearers Red into a sort of desaturated, rusty orange, kind of an orangey, browny, tanny kind of colour. And we're going to fortify all of our rust now with a second layer of kind of brighter rust, just to bring that idea home. And we will, we'll streak this with the brush predominantly. Um, just because we want sort of variations in texture. So if we were to if we were to finger smear this, it would probably get quite lost in the uh, in the darker rust underneath it. We don't really want that. We want it to stand alone as its own layer, as its own effect. So that's what we do. And you'll notice I even let my brush start to fray a little bit there, and still just kept working with it because it just doesn't matter. We're trying to make this look shit. You know, you, you really don't have to be a good painter to paint weathering as I am testament to. And there we go. Now we've got a nice bit of streaky rust all over it. Again, at this stage even, you may decide that you'd call it, call it done. You'd be okay to do that. We've got a nice dark brown colour now, and uh, with this nice dark brown colour, we're going to do that kind of sponge dabbing, dirty splash technique. You see this in GW tutorials, it's a very common technique. This is uh, the kind of sponge that they put in the back of blister packs to protect metal miniatures. Um, you just dab some brown paint onto it and then get most of it off. And when it gets to the point where it's just kind of depositing dots, particles, little, little bits, then you take it to the miniature and you start dotting around little dots, particles and bits of brown paint and it looks like splats of dirt and grime. Um, at first you can sort of be quite subtle with it, be quite careful with it, just touch edges and stuff. And uh, as you wish to, you can start building it up, getting more and more heavy with it. You see there it starts to get quite noticeable. Really the degree to which you want to go nuts with this is, is at your own discretion. I like to be fairly sparing. Just checking that everything still opens and closes there. Figured that was important. Now we're going into some pigment powders. I've got a dark brown pigment powder here. Uh, there will be a second pigment powder in this workup as well, but we're starting with a dark brown and we're just gonna start dabbing it in the corners, getting it around here and there. get some onto the lid. The idea with this stuff basically is you just load a bunch of it onto your brush excessively and then tap it off onto, you know, paper or whatever really, tap it off onto something um, and then start stabbing it at whatever you're trying to get it to stick to. You generally want to set this with like a matte varnish or, or again hairspray works to set it 
Um, setting it is a good idea if you're planning to handle the piece a lot. If the piece is just going to sit on display, don't set it because it looks better when it hasn't been set. Here's that yellow one that I mentioned now, and again, we're just going into exactly the same areas. Uh, it's just to build up again layers to you know create some some variance throughout the piece. Getting it into the areas where I think the you know old rusty grimy patchy nastiness should live. It's all it's all a case of just kind of do I think this looks right here? And you stick it on, and if it doesn't look right, you go shit. Well, it doesn't really matter. There we go. Finally, some blood for the blood god, and we're going to do a number of different techniques here. Blood for the blood god is basically just red and brown ink mixed into map, uh, into gloss varnish. So if you don't own blood for the blood god, by all means mix your own product using something that is blood coloured and gloss varnish. Um, I happen to have a pot of blood for the blood god, so I use it. When it runs out, I'll start just mixing it. It really doesn't matter. It's again, it's another one of those things. It's a very simple product, but you can buy it pre-made in a pot. So if you wish to do so, a little blood splatter there, kind of a bit of directional spray, and then this next technique here, I'm using water with just a touch, just a, a, a bee's dick of black paint in it, a tiny amount. And uh, what this does is it sort of creates water streaking. You know that kind of grime that constantly running water leaves behind. You know from sort of impurities in rainwater and stuff like that. Um, and this does a couple of different things. It, it breaks up those pigment powders a little bit so they don't look quite so overwhelming, so they don't quite look, look so strong and forceful. Um, but it also does leave those nice little sort of streaky watermarks on everything, which is very, very useful. Finally, with some thin white paint and a heavy object, load your brush, hold it above the object and then tap it, and you will get these sort of spatters. Uh, in my head, I decided this was pigeon shit. It can be whatever you want, really. You can even use this for blood, as long as whatever your splattering is thin enough. And that's your net end result for all of that effort. This, to my eye, does honestly look a little bit over-weathered, but it is every weathering technique that I commonly use, or every technique that pertains to creating weathered pieces that I commonly use. Um, and, and so, you know, as a demonstration piece, I think it makes sense. You may decide that if you were to do something like this at home, you'd want to pull back on a few of these, either not use some of them or use less of some of them. But it gives you a good idea of what all of these cool funky things do, and it looks like absolute shit, and I think that's kind of what we were going for. So I consider that mission success. I'm pretty happy with it. And that, as they say, is that commemorating what has so far been six months of an absolute shithole of a year by painting trash. I think that's quite appropriate. But I also think there were some pretty cool techniques there, and I'm sure you'll be able to use them for various different parts of scenery, basing, even certain effects on your miniatures themselves. Tanks especially, those chipping techniques, that dust, the mud, the streaking, stuff like that, looks banging on tanks. Really, really good idea. So, get at me in the comments if you like how it goes down. If you try these techniques yourself and you find them useful, if you think they're good, if you think they're great, if you want to pat me on the back, if you want to tell me I'm a twat, whatever you want to do, drop a comment. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. I like spending my time talking to the people that watch these videos. I find that very fulfilling personally. Don't forget as well to like and subscribe. That is very, very important. Likes get the video seen more. Subscribes get you knowing when I'm posting the videos, which is, you know, if you like them, quite helpful. I'll see you in the next one, folks. we got quick tips coming up this week as well, so uh, don't miss it. It's going to be fun, and thanks a lot for watching. i tell you what I think of this year. i tell you what I think of it. I think this year can get in the fucking bin between bloody coronavirus... The horrible treatment of black people, the horrible treatment of trans people, it's been shit so far. Let's make it better.